Recursion 2 split 5, 3. Given an array of ints, it is impossible to divide the ints into two groups so that the sum of the two groups is the same with these constraints. All the values that are multiple of 5 must be in one group, and all the valuables that valuables, all the values that are multiple of 3 and not a multiple of 5 must be in the other. No loops needed. So let's go over the sample cases first. So here we have the sample case 1, 1. In this case, we do not have any values that are multiple of 5 or 3, so we do not need to care about the additional constraints. Instead, our objective is to divide the array into two groups of equal sum. Those two groups can be 1 and 1. They both have equal sum, and therefore this is indeed possible and we return true. Here we have the case 1, 1, 1. Again, we do not have values of three multiples of 3 or 5, therefore all we need to do is try to split this array into two groups of equal sum. However, it, um, you, you can note that it, that isn't actually impossible. Um, so an easy way to uh, check this is uh, by noting that the sum of all of these elements is 1, 1, 1, so 3. 3 is odd. It is impossible to, uh, to partition this into three, sorry, into two groups of equal sum and have them um, add up to three. This is because, for example, if they equal, both equal um, x, so if one group equals x and the other group equals x, then the total is 2x. This implies that the total sum is even. The total sum for this is odd, therefore it is impossible to create two groups of equal sum, so we return false. Here, we can create a group with 4, another group with 2, and 2. They both have the sum of 4, so it is actually possible to divide the two groups into, sorry, the array into two groups of equal sum. Additionally, because there are no multiples of 5 or 3, we do not need to care about the constraints. So, um, here we return true. So how do we solve this problem? Remember, the, um, remember how we solved the other partitioning problem, which was split array, and also how we solved split odd 10. So the way we solve those um, problems, we're dividing the question into a recursive step and a base step, base case step. So the base case step was this case in which we had nothing left in the array that we hadn't already placed into group A or B. Since we have no more elements to place into group A or B, we only re return true if A and B are equal to each other. If they are equal to each other, then we successfully partition the groups, partition, sorry, partition the elements correctly and created two groups of equal sum, therefore we return true. Otherwise, we return false. For the recursive step, we look at the element that the pointer is currently placed at. So for example, I might be placed here, or here, or here. If I is placed here, then the base, um, this would, we would um, use a base case step because there are no more elements to consider. We have gone through every single element and partitioned them. The pointer will never be somewhere here because we start off at zero and we move this words by incrementing by one. We never increment by negative one, so we never come into this or into this. Um, region. So for the recursive step, we either place group, um, place element nums i into a or b. So, um, yeah, so if you understand how this works, then this problem should be pretty straightforward. Um, and the only other case that we need to consider, constraints that we need to consider are the fact that all the values that are multiple of 5 must be in one group and all the values that are multiple of 3 and not a multiple of 5 must be in the other. So we can arbitrarily define group A as a group with all the multiples of 5. We um, define B as a group where um, all the multiples of 3 that are not a multiple of 5. Um, so what this basically means is that if nums i is a multiple of 5, or if nums i mod 5 equals 0, then we must add it to a. If nums i mod 5 is equal to, sorry, mod 3 is equal to 0, so it's a multiple of 3, it must go into b. Otherwise, 
we can add it into group A or B. And we can consider if either any of these works. If any of these subtrees work for our particular root case at the moment, then we just pass um, that true statement along, uh, therefore creating a recursive tree and a recursive process. So here is how we will implement that. So our recursive helper function will be defined as follows. Public boolean recurs. We still have a pointer um, at what index or what element we are currently considering. We also have um, the sum of groups A and groups B. And we have the array nums. For our base case, if we are in the region here, and we have considered all of the elements, we have nothing else to consider. A and B are finalized, we need to check if A and B follow the constraints. This is when, um, so this means that I is greater than equal to non-solving. Then we just return if A equals B. If A equals B, um, then we did successfully partition the elements into two groups of equal sum. Um, if the A does not equal B, then that current case did not. However, we, it is a tree, and there are other cases that we are currently considering. Um, therefore, even though that current place is uh, might be false, other places might be true. Now here is the recursive step. So if nums i mod 5 equals 0, or nums i is a multiple of 5, then we must add nums i into group A. So we return recurs i plus 1, so we move on to the next element for the next recursion step. A, um, so we add nums i to A. Um, and B is untouched, nums is untouched. Again, A is a group with all the multiples of 5, so we must add nums i if it is a multiple of 5 into group A. All the multiples of 3 go into B, otherwise we can add them to whichever we uh, prefer. So else if nums i is a multiple of 3, so it's not a multiple of 5, and it is a multiple of 3, then we return recurse i plus 1, but now we must add element nums i into group B. Finally, if it is not a multiple of 5 or 3, we have the freedom to choose whichever um, group we add it to. So that is basically just um, an OR statement of both of these statements, because we can choose either one we like. So first, we add it into group A, or we add it into group B. And that is a recursion. So let's run it. Oh, um, so it again, logged out. I'll just make sure to log in real quick. Um, I actually forgot to add the recursive um, helper function, a call to the recursive helper function in this um, function. So what we do is you just um, initialize the recursive process with i being pointed at the first element, so i is um, it is index 0, so the first element is 0, a and b are both empty, and that nums is untouched. Again, i, this value, is what we are, uh, represents group, um, this, which is basically the pointer uh, by which we are moving through the array. Uh, we'll check if this works. Nums.length, yes. So nums.length with parentheses is for strings. This is without it is for arrays. And there it is. It is true. It works.